we've got a round display. Okay. So this big round display, we've actually, it's, you're like, hey, I think this sounds familiar. Yes, we had it as a coming soon. And now it is in stock. We even have a little demo because I've been working on eyeballs code with it. Let's pop it in. You can go. Okay. So this is a gigantic. Big eye. So um, we've got uh, the gigantic eyeball code uh, ported to it. It's a little flickery because this is using IDF4, not IDF5. It's also through a, it's also camera. Through a camera, through a camera. So there's like three cameras involved. Um, but the the colors is really good looking. Yeah, it's good. yeah the color is really good. Uh, this is actually pixel doubled too, by the way. This is um, 360 by 360 pixel doubled up. Um, we're going to try to port this code to IDF5 so it looks even better. But in CircuitPython, it works. In Arduino, it works. Uh, 720 um, by 720 pixels, massive display. I'm also getting a capacitive touch one. It's going to be more expensive. Uh, so I think if you just need a display, you don't need the touch capability. Uh, this is the biggest round display we could find. We we went out. We used our eyes, and we found this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we also have a bunch of Raspberry Pi accessories. So the active cooler for the Pi 5 is a board that plugs in, it like attaches to the Pi 5. You can see like the five, the Pi 5 is not included. This is the thing that's not, you know, it's like the heat sink plus the fan. Um, it plugs in, uh, you will probably need to use a lifter for the two by 20 connector if you want to connect uh, GPIO on top. Um, but if you're doing like a lot of machine learning stuff or like high intensity CPU things with your Raspberry Pi 5, this will help get you the most frequencies, the, the highest computational uh, capability, because otherwise, once the Raspberry Pi heats, the um, it'll start throttling itself so that it doesn't um, keep using as much CPU. So like it'll get slower and slower the hotter it gets. With this, you get all of that computational power. Okay, and then there's cables. There's cables. So this is the Pi display cable. So just this is like a demonstration to show. So we have both the display cable and the camera cable, and they are not the same yes i know it's confusing they, they look at these nearly identical things they look identical but they're this? not what about this the, what about this what about this they're a little bit different um <laughs> but this is the display cable showing so if you have like a raspberry pi 4 display or you have any other raspberry pi cameras you're going to need an adapter cable because the um the new connectors are four lane and they're much you know to make space for the pca connector uh they made these 0.5 millimeter pitch you see this like one dollar connector and then you know you can use your all your old um, accessories with the Pi 5. So yeah, get one of these. And then the start of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, and everybody out there who's being good to one another is? The LM66200. This is Ideal Diode. It's actually a big breakup because I'm going to be using this chip in um, a design. You know, basically, if you have two power supplies on your board, say a light poly battery or USB or like a, you know, two a DC power jack and USB, whatever, and you want to have your electronics use whichever is like available. So sometimes the battery's plugged in, use that. Sometimes a DC plug is powered in or USB, whatever. So decide which power supply to use. You can use two diodes and you connect them up as like a diode or connection, and that will give you um, whichever is highest. That's the current and the voltage supplier. But you have to deal with the dropout of that diode, which can be like half a volt, which can, you know, like that's a lot of power that you might be losing, especially for low power um, situations. Also, the diodes are kind of large. Also, you don't have an enable switch, which you can do with another transistor, um, you know, and then maybe you want to know which one is the one that's activated. So this is kind of like combines about seven transistor diode components together into one. You can connect your two to five volt inputs to the VNs. There's one and two and then ground. And the V-out will be whichever one is higher. And there's also a enable pin. You pull that high. Um, it's by default, it's pulled low to turn on. You pull it high, and it will disable the voltage. And then there's also a status pin that'll tell you which of the two is like the one that's activated. Um, so it's like a very smart version of Ideal Diodes. It's an inexpensive small board, but probably very handy. I think you do like two and a half, yeah, two and a half amperes out. Um, which is nice, also more than most diodes, and uh, only 40 milliohm RDS on, so negligible voltage uh, drop. So great for low power usage or just power supplies where you want, don't want to dissipate a bunch of current uh, through a couple of MBR 120s. New, 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 new,
New, new, new, new, new. Yeah. New, 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 new. 